John Wick Origins, the comic book backstory explored. The perfect revenge story coupled with a protagonist who has superhero-like characteristics sounds like a perfect comic book material, doesn't it? While the legendary assassin is widely known for his exploits in the movie series, the idea of a comic book tracing his origins was quite innovative. The initiative was taken by Dynamite Comics, who created a comic book story arc that serves as a prequel to the first movie in the franchise. In this video, we will explore this backstory of John Wick that explains how he got into this bloody business in the first place. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. What drove John Wick to become the man he is? In order to find the answer to this question, let us look back at the comic book story arc featuring the character. The narrative opens in El Paso, Texas, where John Wick walks into a diner and orders himself a pie. As the lady takes his order, another man who was already sitting there with a lady seems to be quite annoyed about his services. It seems like he has waited quite long for a steak and he isn't too happy about John being attended to before he receives his order. The waitress offers John to sit at a counter if he wants some peace and quiet, and he is quick to suggest that he would like nothing more than some quiet time. The man and the lady seated at the restaurant seem to be planning something unlawful for tonight, but John Wick doesn't pay much attention. However, when John gets his pie served before the man gets his steak, he is livid. He even tries to provoke John Wick, but the waitress requests him to maintain peace in the eatery, to which John coldly suggests that he only likes to be quiet up to a point. Meanwhile, the man and the lady leave the restaurant because of the delay, and John sets out after finishing his meal. He checks into a hotel and takes the top floor even though the hotel manager suggests that the ground floor might be cooler. Once again, John Wick's love for peace and quiet is established as he prefers the top floor only because it will keep him away from all the commotion. His love for animals is also evident, although he feeds a cat here instead of a dog. We get a brief flashback of a young John Wick who appears to be a street urchin on the streets of El Sozel, Baja, California. He is known to be running away with a couple of grand stolen from three renowned thugs, and one of them named Buffalo is not too pleased about the theft. Another one named Pecos is not taking this too seriously, but they are all chasing young John through the streets. Unfortunately, John is far too quick and agile for them, and he jumps over a tall wall. Suddenly, one of them fires a missile launcher, which causes massive explosions in a nearby ghetto-like habitat. As the survivors are running around, the gangsters shoot them dead for fun, and a massacre unfolds for no good reason. John Wick manages to get away, but he watches the carnage helplessly from a distance. It can be assumed that these people meant a lot to him, and he probably grew up among them. This might be his early days for the seasoned assassin, but his compassionate side is already there for the viewer to witness. It is soon revealed going ahead that much of John John's journey so far has been in a quest for revenge. He wants to bring justice to those innocent people who lost their lives 12 years ago, and he will stop at nothing to ensure that the wrongdoers get what they deserve. Thus, according to the comic books, this event is a key factor in shaping John Wick to be the person that you see in the movies, and it also offers some insights into his origin story. He probably grew up as an orphan and made a living by stealing and being a part of other small crimes on the streets. This massacre caused in retaliation of a small theft by John made him lose all the people that he probably held dear, and this fueled his constant urge for revenge and turned him into the dreaded assassin that we know today. How did John get introduced to the Continental Hotel? If you've watched the movies, you're quite familiar with the importance of Sharon Winston's concierge at the Hotel Continental. He has always been around to bring John all the resources and help that he needs, and the comic book explains his loyalty to the hitman. The top floor room that John checks into is right next to Sharon's apartment, and we realize this when a cat wakes John up in the middle of the night. He stares into Sharon's apartment from his window, and Sharon stares back at him, but the brief confusion is quickly broken by a sudden turn of events. Sharon is held at gunpoint by a group of men, and we can see the earlier man from the diner as a part of the gang. John Wick decides that it is time to step into the action and doesn't think twice before picking up a pillow and using it like a protective shield as he breaks through the window after leaping from his hotel room. 
He makes quick work of the thugs and soon everyone is unarmed and lying around injured. The man from the diner tries to load his gun to shoot John but he quickly gets his arm broken. However, John Wick makes it clear that he is not there for the others and it is revealed that Pecos, the man from John's past life, is also a part of the group. Pecos is quite confused about the intentions of John and he demands to know his true identity. 12 years ago and Mexico are enough hints for Pecos to understand who he is dealing with, and he tries to sweet-talk the assassin to stall his advances. He suggests that he is glad John survived the onslaught and he seems eager to get John back into their business. However, all this is just deployed to delay John and prepare an attack, and soon Pecos draws his gun to shoot him dead. But he forgets that it is John Wick whom he is dealing with. The man strikes quicker than lightning and before you know it, Pecos is lying dead with fatal bullet injuries. John collects his phone and purse and this is when he and Sharon acknowledge each other. It is clear that they already know each other and Sharon asks if he is in the business. John reveals that the whole thing is personal and Sharon doesn't probe any further. The other thugs who were briefly relieved when John said that he only came for Pecos suddenly have something to worry about as Sharon picks up his gun and shoots them all dead. He then assumes that John must also be after Pecos' accomplices, Buffalo and Billy, and reveals that they are both members of the local Continental Hotel. This gives them a certain advantage over John Wick, but Sharon is willing to introduce John to the institution as payback for saving his life. However, it also makes it clear that John will have to obey and respect the rules of the house, which all moviegoers are familiar with. They make their way out of the apartment, and we see a specialized waste disposal van appear to clean the bodies as Sharon bribes a cop on the scene with a gold coin. Unknown to both Sharon and John, the lady from the diner has witnessed the whole thing and she reports the entire event to someone named Maria. She seems to be a crime lord with significant command and she wants to issue a hit job for the unwelcome freelancer in the town, John Wick. Meanwhile, Sharon leads John to the Continental El Paso, and is not as grand as you have seen in the Continental Hotels in the movie franchise. Nevertheless, it is still a place of great significance, and John is introduced to the facility courtesy of Sharon. The insides of the Continental, however, are just the same, and friends and foes in the underworld have gathered together to share a drink and find a safe nesting place. As per the rules, no violence is permitted on Continental grounds, and it is a strictly diplomatic playground for the assassins. John Wick's revenge mission is more complicated than he realizes. Just as John has barely seated himself at the Continental Bar area, Maria approaches him with a few sarcastic words indicating that she is well aware of his antiques. All her men in the room cock their firearms and even John reaches out for his, but the buildup is quickly settled by Sharon, who reminds everybody of the non-violent rules of the hotel. He makes it clear that as long as John is on Continental grounds, he enjoys the protection of the hotel and even John must abide by these rules. This forced amicable settlement briefly calms the nerves on both sides and Sharon tells Maria about the attack on him by Pecos and his men, demanding to know if she had employed him. We quickly get to see that Maria is a smart lady, and she quickly dissociates herself from Pecos, suggesting that he had gone rogue. She also thanks John Wick for taking care of her rogue employee and offers him any work suitable for his skills. The Baba Yaga of the assassin world is not too keen to take up the offer and clearly states that he would like to continue as a freelancer. Maria is quick to remind him that this business does better when people do not bring their personal matters into the professional fold, and she leaves. Meanwhile, John plays a master stroke and uses Pecos' phone to chat with Buffalo. He makes Buffalo believe that Billy, the other member of the Notorious Trio, is behind the attack and makes it look as though Pecos is injured but not dead. He suggests that Billy has gone crazy and Buffalo might be next on the list as Pecos is using John Wick to hunt him down. The deception works wonders, and soon Buffalo's men are seen stalking John through the streets. He leads them to a vacant building, and Billy's men are also there looking for John Wick. A brief conversation between Buffalo and Billy reveals that they have both been conned by the hitman and both have been led into thinking that the other one is after their life. Just as their men are about to join forces, John drops something from above and the sudden steer in this tense situation causes the men to mistake this for an attack by the other side. They all start shooting each other, and by the time they realize that they are being played, half the men are done for. John Wick appears and takes down Buffalo and Billy's remaining men effortlessly, and they watch helplessly. They plan one last attack, but John repels it quickly enough before having them cornered. Billy and Buffalo want to strike a deal with John in order to survive, but the hitman holds them responsible for the death of 53 innocent people in that fateful day 12 years ago. At this point, Buffalo reveals something that changes the dynamics of the entire revenge saga. 
He claims that none of the trio was involved in the massacre and it was the act of a twisted young woman named Calamity who worked with them. She was the crazy one who fired the missile launcher, and from the looks of it, she enjoyed all the violence and bloodshed. Buffalo and Billy claim to have taken care of her, but that is not going to stop John from sparing their lives. Luckily for them, their men managed to create some distraction for the hitman as they barely managed to escape with their lives. They make a frantic phone call to Maria who seems quite amused by the turn of events. She sends the car to summon John Wick as her guest and the man obliges and heads back to the Continental. But the simple revenge story has become a lot more complicated. Who is Calamity and where is she now? Can John finally put his psychological demons to rest and punish every single one involved in that massacre? Stay tuned to find out. Is Calamity one of the most twisted John Wick villains? Back at the continental El Paso, John Wick is once again approached by Maria to serve as one of her henchmen. She warns him that refusing to serve one of the official organizations could make him stand out as a threat to all, thereby endangering his life. But John persists with his idea of serving independently. Maria walks away suggesting that she had to try one last time, and she steps into another room where Buffalo and Billy are waiting. They give her a marker, each a blood oath for her in favor of saving their lives, but little do they know, that they are soon about to be deceived. Maria commands them to kill John Wick as payback for the marker, and both Buffalo and Billy are shocked by her demands. She suggests that they should make use of one of their aces, and the men are in two minds regarding enlisting the services of this deadly killer. Finally, they realize that they have no choice and head out to a mental institution where Calamity spends her days locked up in a cell. Her first appearance makes her stand out as one of the creepiest villains in the entire John Wick rogues gallery. She has an uncanny smile on her face and the walls in her cell are sketched with vivid details of murder and destruction. Her doctor suggests that there has been no major improvements in her psychotic behavior in spite of all the medication, but Buffalo suggests that he is more interested in the old calamity for their purpose. They probably bribe the authorities because soon the doctor says that after spending a little over 10 years in treatment, calamity is now free to go. Even calamity is amused by this sudden turn of events, but she is more than ready to embrace the life of violence and murder once again. The moment she is handed a weapon, she turns on the doctor and her staff and kills them all. She tells a bewildered Buffalo and Billy that they did not treat her very well and had it coming. She learns the details about John Wick and how he has killed every single man sent after him by Buffalo and Billy. Calamity is dismissive of the man, and she shows no signs of remorse regarding killing all those people back in the day. She sends out a message in the Common Assassins group requesting a capable cleanup crew for a hit job on John Wick. This alerts Sharon, who has already brought in a doctor to treat John's wounds from the previous fight. The man is indebted to John for saving his life, and he leaves no stones unturned in trying to ensure that John is safe and sound. Everyone seems to know about the dangers posed by Calamity, and she is more like the Joker in the John Wick universe. Several assassins try their luck and the body count rises as John Wick takes care of these threats without much trouble. Amidst this chaos and fighting, Maria drives up to John in her car along with her henchmen. She extends her offer yet again, suggesting that Calamity is only testing John with these assassins before she comes herself. However, John sticks to his decision of freelancing and he seems prepared enough to handle the ruthless chaos that Calamity brings. It all boils down to the final showdown. John Wick's Redemption Arc, the final chapter in the Revenge Saga. John makes a call and offers Buffalo and Billy an opportunity to end this unending struggle quickly. He suggests a final meeting at the quarry northwest of town and Calamity is amused by the location because it is far away from any innocent civilians. She simply cannot make sense of the fact that John Wick has this compassion for collateral damage. And just for fun, she fires another shot from her missile launcher at a nearby building. Her actions only make John more determined than ever to deliver his brand of justice. He rides on a motorcycle and evades the constant barrage of her shots and her henchmen when he gets a call from Sharon. The trusted concierge informs him that such chaos will not be tolerated and the likes of Billy, Buffalo, and Calamity will be taken care of by the organization. He advises John to drive away because he has already won, but the latter wants to stick around to make sure that there are no slip-ups this time. She soon shoots the tires of John's bike and causes him to be cornered by constant gunfire. As a last resort, John gets a hold of Billy and keeps him hostage, but Buffalo and Calamity soon turn the tables on him and threaten to kill innocent civilians held at Calamity's gunpoint. Billy warns John that she is not in the right state of mind and it wouldn't be wise to test her. He also reveals the twisted origins of Calamity, where she was found in a box in the woods. She was raised like a coyote in a cage, and her animalistic tendencies never went away despite all the training. 
Realizing the hopelessness of the situation, John gives up his hostage, but he also makes a crucial phone call to Maria. He tells her that he is ready to accept her offer, and she immediately calls Buffalo to end hostilities. In order to ensure the safety of John Wick, she also sends in the cops, but Calamity is too much of a wild child to be controlled. In a brutal final shootout, Buffalo and Billy are killed by John, who hesitates for a second before putting a bullet in Calamity after learning about her tragic origins. Eventually, he is forced to shoot her once, she is about to do the same. It all ends with John back at the Continental, where Sharon wants to summon the medical services to treat his wounds. But Maria steps in and states that it would no longer be necessary because John is now taken care of. The story ends with John becoming an asset for Maria and her hit jobs, and we get the hint of how John ever became formally inducted into this business. Is this origin story canonical and does it fit into the movies? Before the comic books hit the shelves, the editor of Dynamite Comics revealed that they had the blessings from all the creative minds involved in the making of the movies. Even Keanu Reeves was readily on board for the retelling of his origin story, and Dynamite roped in a seasoned Marvel and DC writer, Greg Pak, for the role. It is fair to call the comic books canonical because they not only mimic the likeness and intensity of the character, but also retain crucial elements from the movies. Besides, having the green light from the makers makes it canonical by default. While the story does connect few dots from the movies, it doesn't exactly spell out every little detail. The movies, for instance, are known for creating an air of mystery around the characters, and the comic books only sheds light partially on these mysteries. The comic book story does not explain how John found his lady love and became a changed man following their relationship. It also does not introduce a key character, Maria, in any of the movies, and you will be left wondering about the consequences of their partnership. On the other hand, there are some clear hints to the past life of John Wick. The narrative explains why John is so compassionate, which is probably a result of growing up in poverty. As it turns out, he has always been a character with soft spot for animals, but instead of dogs, he is shown caring for cats in the comic books. One of the most important links between the comic book and the first movie is the explanation behind his relationship with the Continental Hotel. One might assume that Winston, the manager of the Continental Hotel in New York, pulled him into this world, but the comics revealed that it was actually Sharon behind the introduction. He was the one who first brought John into the continental El Paso, and the story also reveals why Sharon is so eager to help John in the movies. After all, he owes his life to the Baba Yaga of the assassin world. Overall, the comic books have created a great open-ended platform where a lot more can be added to the character in subsequent editions. John Wick's extensive career as a hitman has several phases, and there can be a few more issues to bring more clarity to the fans. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the entire John Wick story arc from the comic books, and also tell us what are you think this is the perfect prequel narrative.